Snowkite Masters is one of the best events. Skyline is at a super high altitude, so pretty guaranteed on the win. This is our eighth year. We love it. We do it every year. We do it to bring all our snow kite friends together. You can explore the hills, you know, just pull up a kite and take off a little bit. It's definitely a destination that I, I want to keep coming back to. This place rocks. Amazing what they do. Don't need to try it all. Cause we made it as kings. Make me show it look dandy. Something about these likes like a plate full of candies. I mean, look at the terrain around. That's what's different than water kiting. You got to look at all the features that you're kind of kiting around and see, you know, how is the wind going to hit this? How's it going to affect this? Hey, I'm Billy Bordy with North Snow Kites. I'm here with James Brown and Dave Griffiths, unsponsored, which is just a miracle. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to chat a little bit about how you can take your water kiting skills, the tricks that you already feel comfortable with, and bring them into terrain and snow kiting. These guys are all riding down the hill building a little bit of parent. They're working this little corner section and the updraft that's coming up there. Now that wind cornice is there for one reason only, wind cycles through there and gets turbulent. Sometimes it spikes off, sometimes it spikes off to the side. So these guys are using this little updraft that's right there by coming down the hill, building a parent speed, and then pulling the trigger and allowing the kite to actually float them a little bit. I like to think of it as a big wave, really. It's Mark cool. Johnson throwing down the, daffy, the yep. gnarly daffy. Dude, old school, 100%. <laughs> We can go up it, we can go down it, we can go across it. There I am, slashing this cornice, getting some speed coming down, yeah. just sending my kite. Big wave slash on the cornice. A little board tweak. Yep, floating, keeping my head turned so I can see where I'm landing there. Nice work. It's amazing to see the, fly, the snow fly off of it, for sure. It's pretty neat if you could see a block break off like we did two years ago, having blocks fly, fly off, the, off the cornice and so on. Uh, once again, you have to be aware of yourself and also your friends, too. You don't want to be breaking off uh, cornice blocks when your friends are cutting below you. Coming off the cornice, and I think this time I didn't do anything, but I hit a bunch of chunky stuff right about here. <laughs> Avalanche chunks. <laughs> <laughs> Face planted. Yeah, that's one of my premier moves. That's the one that's going to give me the sponsorship right there. With an east wind coming from the opposite direction, it allows us to use the cornices like a half pipe. Oh yeah, it's awesome to kite cornices. We actually look for them a lot of times. And that is so fun to just slash off the top of the cornice like a wave, come back down. We get to kite, you know, the best, the best faces, the best cornices, everything that's wind loaded. But you know, that also presents huge danger. It, there are some dangers. Certainly, the avalanche danger is quite high at the moment. I hope if you get buried, they follow your kite lines and unbury you. Uh, and the people that are smart are wearing beacons. I'm kiting with a beacon every day. No questions asked. You gotta watch that. You should always be wearing your beacon, probe, shovel, and you know, be checking that with the guys you're with. The wind does react differently around terrain. Uh, it, it definitely has an updraft effect when it hits hits a hill and goes up it, and obviously the, the wind's gonna go up and over and then start billowing behind. Once you get to the top of the hill, you have to be careful with that also. If you're getting your kite collapsed or, or kind of get tangled. As soon as you start getting around areas, you know, the wind's compressing and pushing up. You know, it changes your, you know, your wind window. You also got to watch where you put your kite. You can, you know, stay away from cornices high enough to where your lines aren't going to catch. You see all these awesome downhill footage. Everybody wants to see the turn, but we got to get back up too. The way that most people climb is by looping the kite and going straight downwind, because most of the time the wind is blowing up the mountain. When I usually get into some interesting terrain features, you kind of want to just sign the kite and not do the full loop. That way you're not going to catch your lines on anything and kind of keep the kite where you want and keep it safer. You know, As soon as you loop the kite, you're going to generate a lot of power, a lot of pull, and you kind of want to stay away from that when you're in you know, dicey or spots. You can climb almost any hill. Uh, I mean, pick a steepness, and if it's windy enough, you can pretty much make it up it.
there is an updraft. There is a thermal there that can that can kind of mess you up. Uh, it can send you straight off the hill, and you have to be ready for it. You know, if you're at the top of that hill and you send your kite the wrong way, or just a weird gust kind of hits it and brings you on that updraft, then uh, then yeah, you can start going in the air and, and you start gliding away from the hill. You could be, a, you know, an avid water kiter and think you got it all down, but all of a sudden you jump on snow, and if you do have that terrain, it's going to change things really quick. Here I'm coming down off the corners and then coming right back up, kind of getting some ridge lift there. Big spike there going straight out. Yeah. Yep, and then I loop do a little down loop to kind of come back into the hill and uh, pull myself up the hill by doing some kite loops. It can be dangerous kiting on the corners on a wind-loaded slope, basically. But it's too much fun not to touch it, so why not go after it? Typically, when you're jumping off cliffs, you're you're looking to do a front loop of some sort to keep your kite in the air. A lot of times when you go off the cliff, you're penduluming. So if you don't keep the kite moving and back forward, you're going to have some trouble. But Dave's got a big paragliding background. You know, Dave knows all about updraft and lift. And you know, when you're working that Cornish, Dave, and there's some video of you coming off here, and kind of moving along it. You feel that updraft in the kite. You use oh, yeah. the kite and you're stalling the kite, right? You're looking for that moment of flight, basically. Well, and if you get a little more wind, you can just kind of hover there above the above the uh, cornice for a while before you go out. You literally have to push the bar out to get away from the hillside. And that's what kind of makes Skyline so great is the, the variety here. You know, you've got the rolling hills, but then you also have these large hills and cornices. Um, and you can get great ski lines, you know, kite up, ski down step. New style of kiting. I mean, people climbing hills and trying to ski down them, you know. So, a palm lift to powder is what I call it. I love to ski and I love to kite and put them both together and I'm a happy girl. Stay safe. Don't be stupid. And don't ban your local spot. We've got all the best kite companies, all the best riders, and, and for sure, all the best people. All the kite companies came together and made this event happen for us. We didn't charge entry fees this year, so it's free to the athletes. I'm here representing Fly Surfer this year, and uh, as everyone knows, we got a great light wind kite. Personally, I just got sponsored by Ozone. I'm a team rider now, and um, hopefully get to keep sharing the soap that I've always shared for Ozone. My entourage. Thank you guys. There's no flags in the background. Good. I don't want any any anybody. I just got a cloud. That's cool. A cloud. Absolutely. I totally respect that. There are no logos in the sky. Cool. I like that. This episode of the KiteSites.com series brought to you by Patrick Nadell's Beer Koozies. It, totally handmade in the U.S. in a camper, so yeah, support the cause is my gas money. Homemade beer koozies. Yeah, hey, yeah, check yeah, out those koozies. Yeah. That, these, these, are, these are so awesome. You can't come up here with that one. Like no, definitely not. All the cool kids are wearing them. Yeah, you got to be cool to get one, though. Look for Patrick at your next kiting event. You don't want to lose your beer. You don't spill it. You can use your two hands. Thank you. Beer koozie.